next up, we have John Harding from Kurt Motor Company with the, uh, the electric scooters up front. Okay. Okay. Hi. Uh, my name is John Harding um, with Kurt Motor Company. I'm the president and co founder. Over uh, sitting on one of the scooters is my model, uh, Eric Cappy. No, sorry. <laughs> co founder and chief engineer. Um, our mission, practical, affordable, all electric transport, available now. Um, practical, affordable, available now. Well, mission accomplished. Um, we actually have um, two models here tonight showing you. Uh, the C1X is the bigger red one. Um, it's got a range of up to 80 miles, um, a speed of up to 70 miles an hour, and it retails between 55 and 7,500. We're delivering the first of these to our customers starting this month. Uh, C2X is the uh, smaller one. Um, that's got a range of up to 40 miles. Um, and it's got a 30 mile an hour top speed restricted, so they can be considered a moped. With the red bike, uh, with the bigger, with the C1X, um, you need a motorcycle license. With the moped, anybody with a driver's license can ride. And we'll do an unrestricted version of the smaller one, which will have a top speed of about 40 to 45 miles an hour. And of course, everybody will buy the restricted one and then be restricted. But <laughs> 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 okay. So, uh, why EVs? Um, obviously, there's a high interest in uh, This is probably, you know, well understood by everybody here. High interest in electric vehicles, primarily three concerns environmental concerns, security, and cost the volatility of oil and, and OPEC. Um, depending on your background, one of those speaks more to you than others. But usually, at least one of them speaks to you. Um, you know, some people are convinced that man has nothing to do with global warming. Well, I don't tend to go that, that way. I mean, I think we need environmental concerns, you know, um, our top. Um, the other thing to, um, the other thing to consider is all the major car manufacturers have electric vehicle plans. Now, they're, they're taking the approach of the increasing electrification of their fleets, so they're moving much more slowly. Uh, hybrid electric vehicles, the Prius, um, the Fusion, the things that are out now. Plug-in hybrids are coming next with uh, things like the Chevy Volt that I'm sure you've all heard about. And then most companies also have a pure electric vehicle in their lineup as well, in their plans. Uh, Nissan has the Leaf, Ford has a Focus uh, that is going to be um, fast electric vehicle. At Kumoko, um, we concentrate on BEVs only. Um, yes, you trade off range. But for that trade-off, you get reduced initial cost, reduced operating cost, reduced complexity, zero emissions, and zero oil use. So you get a lot of gain by not having a gas motor anywhere in the equation. And for that, you trade off range. Why did we go with electric scooters? Um, well, we can't afford electric cars. <laughs> We'd love a Tesla of $100,000. Um, and even uh, more modest, like things like the um, Nissan Leaf or the Focus battery electric vehicle, they're going to have a high price. You're going to pay a high premium to get an all electric car. Whether that premium is fair or not is debatable, but that's what it is. Um, now, some people turn to gas motor scooters as a way of reducing their oil, uh, oil usage, and that's good. They certainly get more miles per gallon. But one thing to bear in mind is that gas scooters often pollute a lot more than electric vehicles. Um, and that's because there's less emission controls, and in some parts of the world, basically no emission controls. Excuse me, a lot more than regular cars. A lot more than regular cars, sorry, yes. Um, Two-wheel electric vehicles fulfill all the battery electric vehicle advantages. But one of the key things is there's a good match between the electric vehicle's range capability and how people use a scooter. People don't use scooters to drive across the country. They use scooters for local journeys. Um, and there's a pre-existing market of scooter users. And there is actually a current market of two-wheeled EVs. Um, we're not new. We're not breaking new ground here with developing the market. However, there's two, there's, there's two, there's two types at the moment. There's the cheap imports. Um, there's a company called Extreme. Um, and they sell their product. They import their product directly from China. They sell it over the internet via drop shippers. Um, 
and they have a terrible quality reputation and a terrible customer support reputation. Um, they, they were also well-built bikes. Um, some of you may have heard of the Vectrix VX1 um, or the Bramo Inertia, and that's actually spelled incorrectly. Um, Inertia is spelled correctly, but they spell it with um, These bikes are well-built, um, good design value, uh, good quality, but they're very expensive. $11,000 and $12,000 is more than most people are going to spend on limited range two-wheel transport. So we see that there's an empty sweet spot. And um, for mid-priced bikes um, with excellent quality and performance, and that are available now, because there's a whole host of vaporware out there. Um, this isn't vapor. Um, oh, I went the wrong way. So we believe that we fill a sweet spot. Um, why do we think we fill that sweet spot? Well, we're best in class for price, performance, and customer service. The price, we're, we're far less than the Vectrixes and the um, be it um, Bramo inertias of the world. Um, yes, we may be more than extreme. One thing to bear in mind, though, is on a web search, I found prices that were significantly less than ours and prices that were significantly more than ours for the same bikes. Um, so there's another thing extreme doesn't do is police its um, distributing very well. Um, performance was we're, we're best in class. 70 miles an hour is the, is the fastest top speed. We've got the equal best in real-world range. Um, now, you, the eagle eye amongst you will know that I said 80 miles earlier on, and here I say 50 miles. 80 miles is what we call marketing miles. Um, <laughs> 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 well, that's another way of putting yeah. it, yes. Yes, I would not never say that. You lie! Um, <laughs> um, but um, everybody tends to quote maximum range in ideal condition constant. Speed. Well, we're in the market with these people, so we need to quote the same. However, in real world range, you can get on our bike, this, this red one here has, a, has, and it comes down to the size of the battery pack. We have a five and three quarter kilowatt hour battery pack um, and weigh 400 pounds. The Vectrix has a 3.2 kilowatt hour battery pack and weighs 520 pounds. Which one do you think goes further? We do. Um, and that's why people like Vectrix have bad customer relations. They overpromise and underdeliver. The salesmen all quote the marketing lines. And oh yes, you'll definitely get it, and the battery will last forever, and oh, don't worry. The person pays the $11,000 and then gets disappointed. They love it initially, and then, then it kind of gets disappointed. Um, and basically, extreme quality is terrible, um, and having customers and generally, generally clueless dropshippers. Um, the reason I got into this was I bought an Extreme, um, and I bought it sight unseen, and I figured that I knew what I was getting into, and I could put it together where I needed to. Um, I started selling them, um, and built up, a knowledge, built up a reputation as knowledgeable and honest and prompt in, in dealing with problems. Why did we manage to succeed? Well, we took a pragmatic approach. We didn't reinvent any wheels. 80% um, of what's on the bikes is off-the-shelf technology. We use lithium batteries, um, which are the best batteries in the market space for um, automotive use. Um, lithium iron phosphate in particular are what uh, most of the major manufacturers are going to put in there, plug-in hybrids. Um, we use a brushless DC hub motor, a brushless controller from Kelly Controls, and we use a um, for this bike here, a rolling chassis that we get from a major motorcycle manufacturer as a, what I call a glider, which is a bike without any engine transmission um, or fuel handling. Um, another important thing in, in our design, as opposed to something like a Bramo or a Vectrix, is we have a loosely coupled system. So we can monitor the state of the industry, and when better, better energy storage technology comes along, if EE store ever actually delivers on an ultra capacitor, then that will, that will work. Um, as long as we can buy it and, and have access to it, we can swap out the energy storage and put it in our bike. Um, and we can also, and this is the, this is the second to last slide, um, our technology strategy is that we need to identify areas where we can improve them. Um, we've already had, we've been going for about a year to, to get from idea to product to 
customer, um, which is phenomenal in, in the actual timelines um, that you usually see in, in this sort of development. Um, but we've already discovered what things we'd like to change. Um, we have ideas for better battery charging and battery management. Um, I just beg your pardon, I'm going to back up because I realized I didn't do what's our special source and what we already do. Um, basically, a number of key things here. The most key is the battery management system. We have 30 cells in the red bike, um, and any, any battery pack made up of many cells in series is going to get out of balance because each physical cell responds slightly differently. Um, we monitor each cell individually. We make sure that no cell gets undercharged, no cell gets overcharged. And that uh, we also do a balanced charge. So when the first charge, when the first cell gets charged, we shut the charge around it and keep charging the others. When the next one gets charged, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, until the last one is charged, and then we know the pack is full. Um, systems that work on the pack average uh, can overcharge some cells and undercharge others, and you get a vicious feedback, um, a negative feedback cycle. Um, we also have something on there called the bike control unit, which offers the higher level functions, uh, things like an accurate fuel gauge, diagnostic information, um, safety cutouts. Um, and obviously we have to do some mechanical modifications to the bike. Um, we make improvements and we've, we've improved things like the rear suspension geometry. We do our own swing arm, our own battery box. Um, while doing all this, there's other things that we want to improve. Um, Probably the first one, up, first one here is, and the biggest that probably we're most excited about is the hub motor. Hub motors are great uh, for packaging. They're lousy for heat dissipation um, and, and thus limited by power. We have ideas for better uh, power management, heat management for larger vehicles and higher speeds. Um, we expect to be applied to patents later this year. And that's it. Next steps. Raising funds, selling bikes, and spreading the word. Um, that's that's my presentation. Questions? Um, you said. Yeah, I've been looking for you, man. Hi, we're here. <laughs> you know, I've been important to electric electric vehicles about eight years, um, so it's good to know you're here. Um, are you looking at a? It's funny how you land man Are you looking at an all-weather vehicle too? Are you looking at a trike? Yes. A tadpole design? Um, yes. We are, we're looking at a trike. Uh, we only had five minutes, so we didn't get everything on there. Um, we have a chassis identified, uh, which we're going to electrify. Um, hopefully get to that this winter. Um, and if we get funding, we'll, we'll get to it quick. Well, I'm working with another company, a consulting them on their electric vehicle in California, so we need to talk. OK, great. Let's yeah. do that. Tell us about the uh, braking system on the big red bike. It has conventional hydraulic brakes front and rear, which makes it a whole lot easier to get through all the uh, DOT requirements. Right. It also does have full regenerative braking. So mm -hmm. when you first grab the brake lever, it engages the electrical brake, and it's putting energy back into the battery pack as you slow down. If, oh my gosh, that, guy's, that bumper is coming really close, you squeeze harder, then you get into the hydraulic brake. Yep. Turn it up. Oh. I've been wanting to do this all day. Ryan is glad. Yeah. <laughs> Does it come in butter green? Uh, yes, it, comes in, it comes in a dark green, yes. It comes in a dark green, yes. Why does it make any noise? <laughs> actually, here it's a uh, three phase brushless motor, so you're turning on and off different windings to step the magnets around, it's a little bit like a stepper motor. You're actually hearing those windings turn on and off. You don't hear what you don't hear at speed. Well, it gets less at speed, and and you don't hear, well, whether it gets less or you just don't hear it because of um, tire noise and wind noise. They're not totally silent. I want to get to this gentleman over here. This is full speed. Several here. times. Yes, how long does the battery last? And how um, much is it to replace? The battery, um, the battery lasts 2,000 cycles, okay. um, and that's about 70,000 miles. So it's pretty much the life of the bike for this type of scooter. Um, and it does that because of our BMS. Now, our BMS 
we'll monitor each individual cell. And if we detect one cell goes bad, you can replace just one cell. And one cell in the, this, this has 60 amp hour cells, and one cell is about 100 bucks. If you had to, if you had to replace all 30, it's a grand. Um, Any other what's, uh, questions? What's recharge time, and is there tax breaks for? Four to six hours for a full charge, less if you haven't fully depleted it. Yes, there's a tax break. It's a thousand dollars. No, it's ten percent. Um, it's ten percent in in 2009. So hurry up and buy one. Uh, <laughs> it's it's ten percent. Whether it gets whether it gets extended next year or not remains to be seen. It's different than the it's different than the four wheel one. Just like um, the therapy the therapists consider themselves second class to the to the medical. Well. Motorcycles are second class to the cars. They had to rewrite the bill that introduced it when it did, didn't apply to uh, to, car, to bikes. Uh, yes. What was the horsepower? What's the horsepower? Um, on the red bike, about 16 horsepower. And yours? This one is smaller. I think it's about 12. Okay. And well, in fact, we'll have to really, well, it will be limited to two. It will be limited to two horsepower as a, oh, as expected for for, for a low pad. It has to be two horsepower. Right. 30 mile an hour top speed. Yes? So how many liters of cells in the battery pack? 30 cells uh, making a 96 volt nominal pack. 20 cells making a 66 volt nominal do, pack. Do you have any uh, invention disclosure to be protected? Thank you, but invention. We're working on uh, some new motor technology, but we're uh, not discussing that now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, in each of the time, let's, let's uh, see if any questions for the, the open sure. up the afterward, but uh, let's go ahead and take our speakers.